on my mix selection panel, I've got my 12 outputs represented here by the 12 physical outputs coming back of the mix. And you notice that I've got some additional ones that I've not used. If I had uh, a breakout box or a stage box uh, connected by a network cable, an AVB cable, uh, I would be able to use these additional mixes on that box. Uh, but what if I wanted to change the overall level of my mixes? That's where the mix masters come in. And so if I select mix masters, it gives me the masters for all of my 12 mixes all together. And I can adjust each of them as I like. And I can also come up here to the input uh, area and adjust the name of each of these channels. So this is where I would come if I wanted to uh, adjust the name of any of my inputs. So I put in uh, one pastor two here uh, and you can see it down here and you can see it over here. Uh, when I make that change, it happens globally uh, to all of the various places where that name appears. So here, uh, because I'm on Mix Masters, I've got a different set of options for my inputs than I would normally have. I can select it as an auxiliary channel, a sub-channel, or a matrix channel. I can link it in stereo, so that's how I put uh, these two channels, these two channels, and these two channels together. Here, if I come there, stereo linked, and I've got left, and I've got right, uh, which I can modify separately. Uh, so then I can choose whether I want pre-1, uh, and pre-1 means that the signal goes to the auxiliary output before it goes through the uh, the fat channel. If I do pre-2, it's after the fat channel, so the compressor, equalizer, limiter, all the rest of these, uh, the noise gate, are all affecting the channel before it goes to the output. Or if I do post, then the fat channel and the main fader will all affect what goes to this output. So because of the way that I've got my system set up, I want it to be pre-2 because I want for the fat channel uh, settings, my compressor, my equalizer, my limiter, to affect uh, what is going out but I don't want the main fader. I want, if I've got the main fader on the, the board here uh, down at, at zero, I still want that sound going to the soundboard so that uh, somebody changing this uh, here doesn't cut sound going to uh, the, the, the soundboard that I've got set up. So uh, in this way, I can go to Mix Masters and I can have control over each of these indiv individual inputs uh, to be able to set them up in the way that I want them. And I've got fat channel controls, both uh, for the individual channels when I'm on the main view, and for the mix when I'm on the mix master view. So I can have different fat channel settings uh, for the individual channels, and then uh, fat channel settings for everything going out of that mix. And so I've got two levels of control there. Now, in addition to my mixes, I've also got groups. And group masters are DCAs, digital control amplifiers. And this particular soundboard does something interesting. It automatically sets up groups that can then be adjusted. Uh, so here you can see my group masters. Uh, for speech, vocals, piano, guitar, drums, and bass. And so if I turn that on off again, uh, you can see I'm on mains, but it's uh, here I've got my speech group. And so suddenly you see that all of the channels that I had have been put down into just these three. So it's the pulpit, the reader, and the wireless handheld microphone, which are all... Uh, typically used for people who are simply speaking. And then I've got my speech fader with a solo and a mute. And what happens is if I draw this down, you will see that my sound gets affected because all three of these faders are moving controlled by this one fader. And if I move it up, then my sound increases. So if I go uh, to something that's not going to be affected, 
Uh, so if I've got uh, each of these faders up and I draw this down, you can see that all of them move in a relative fashion. And so they maintain their relationship to one another. The center one is lower to begin with, so it comes down slower. The one on the right is the highest, so it comes down the fastest. And by the time that I get down to here, they're all very close to one another. And then right at the bottom, they're all equal. And so this is a way to uh, set up groups. And you can come in and edit and uh, define what is in what group. Uh, and so I can delete the group or add channels to it or remove channels from it and select exactly what I want to be in this group. Uh, but when this first comes up, uh, uh, so and if I edit, I can also come in and change what the, the whole group is called. Uh, so this way, uh, it automatically will select for you a series of groups based on the type of channels that you've set up by the icons that we begin with. So anything that's a microphone is going to be in the vocals, but I've broken it down into speech and vocals. Uh, it's automatically going to select all my pianos, and if it doesn't do that right, then I can just hit edit and select any channel that I want uh, to be in my piano group. Guitar, drums, bass, all of these I can have control with my digital control amplifier which moves groups of channels up and down in a way in which the main faders are affected by this slider based on the groups that they're in. So anything that I've got in a mix that's post fader is going to be affected by this at the same time that what's going to my main bus is affected. I hope that makes sense. It's a different way to be able to control multiple things at the same time. Now, you may just want to do all of that through the mixes, but groups is just another way to view it. And in this way, uh, and you can also select traditional DCA, uh, and that is going to remove some of the automatic group fe fe features that you've got. And then if I'm done with that, I can just hit exit filter, and it's going to bring me back to my main group. So I hit speech, exit filter, I've got everything back again.